introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology lecture number 16. I'm Dr. Pravez Ahmed. And today's lecture, we will have a discussions on nanomaterial synthesis techniques. At first, we will try to describe the method for nanomaterial deposition and the form of thin film. That is, we call a uh, vapor deposition. So let's proceed towards uh, the vapor deposition techniques for the synthesis of nanomaterial. So nanomaterial uh, synthesis technique in the form of thin film, uh, I mean, it can be mostly done by the vapor depositions. But uh, before that, uh, that we proceed toward the method that is that is called the vapor depositions or uh, we discussed that how many vapor deposition technique we have. First of all, we should define that what is thin film. Thin film is basically the materials with a thickness less than 100 nanometers and that is mostly deposited at the form, uh, I mean on the substrate. I mean the material that is being de uh, deposited in a form of a thin layers uh, with a thickness of less than 100 uh, nanometer on a substrate we call that a uh, thin film so we have normally the thin film deposition is done by uh, by the technique that we call vapor depositions so in vapor depositions mainly uh, we have three major technique the first we call uh, thermal depositions uh, sorry thermal evaporations uh, the second is the sputtering and the third we call uh, chemical vapor deposition. So we have three main techniques and vapor depositions for the deposition of thin film uh, that is uh, nanomaterial in the form of thin film. Uh, the first we call thermal evaporations, the second is sputtering and the third vapor, uh, chemical vapor depositions. So let's start the, the discussion from the first one that is called thermal evaporations. So the setup for the thermal evaporations, you can see it here. I mean, it's the exact setup for the thermal ev evaporations. I mean, it's, uh, for depositing nanomaterial in the form of thin film, the setup that is uh, used for uh, this purpose is exactly the one uh, that you can see it here in this particular uh, figure. So what we have uh, in evaporation technique, uh, we have a source materials. So that source material, you can have it here. Uh, this is the source material and this source material is heated in a high vacuum. I mean this is the chamber. This is all you can see it here. This is the chamber. Here we can create a, a high vacuum. Uh, I mean the vacuum in a range of that is uh, I mean a vacuum smaller than uh, 10 raised to the power minus 5 tar. I mean we should have pressure smaller than 10 raised to the power minus 5 tar. Uh, tar inside uh, this chamber. I mean, this is the vacuum requirement for the deposition of thin film uh, where the evaporation techniques and the vacuum uh, uh, Hence, that's why sometimes we call this technique as the vacuum uh, Depositions technique. I mean uh, the evaporation technique. We also call uh, the vacuum deposition technique for uh, deposition of thin film I mean that uh, I mean it's, it's, it's being operated at higher vacuum so that's why we call that uh, vacuum depositions uh, technique so uh, what we mean we mean that high vacuum is required and the reason for the high vacuum uh, is that to minimize the collision of the source uh, atom uh, with the background species that is uh, light of sight uh, deposition I mean we want uh, less inclusion of the impurity inside uh, I mean the chamber uh, that is uh, to affect our deposition of thin film or our required uh, nanomaterials. So along with that, uh, the heating, uh, I mean uh, the heating is normally, you, you can see it here, here we have the heating source. So this uh, heating is normally provided by uh, a source that is normally a resistive or E-beam source. I mean, uh, Two main uh, heating sources that are being normally utilized uh, and vacuum uh, and evaporations. Uh, I mean, it can be either a resistive heating or it can be an E beam source uh, that should be utilized here in the uh, evaporation uh, setup. So, uh, surface interactions. Uh, I mean, once uh, we're trying to operate the system while we're trying to uh, deposit the narrow materials and the uh, evaporation technique so uh, you should remember once you started I mean you heat up the the source materials 
uh, and you have the vapor that vapor that are being accelerated uh, here to uh, the vapor uh, which are being put uh, with the vapor holders so normally uh, we we have the surface interactions and we remember these surface interactions uh, these are physical so it can be very fast that is how much fast i mean the, the deposition rate that should be greater than one micron per minute uh, possible but film quality may suffer i mean the deposition rate if you if you want to have the high deposition rate so we remember for that purpose the i mean the film quality may be affected uh, so for R&D typical we have uh, I mean the deposition rate that is in the range of 0 0.1 to uh, 1 nanometer per second I mean if you want to have a thin film for research and development purpose so for that uh, we have to reduce uh, the deposition rate uh, to this particular range but normally we have uh, this past range so along with that we have high stacking coefficients that mostly occur at low temperature so uh, what we have the eight atom stage uh, uh, very very ahead with the limited surface migration so that lead to poor conformal coverage or significant uh, shadow but along with that we should have to remember that this also makes the evaporation the most popular thin film depositions for nano fabrication using the laptop uh, process the laptop process we already discussed in uh, one of our course that is also available online uh, in the uh, in the titles uh, that is thin film uh, in the form of thin film technology so you can watch that the full detail for the laptop uh, methods so uh, diffusion rate uh, is determined by the emitted plugs uh, and by the geometry of the source and the uh, vapor which you can have it here so uh, from that you can determine you can easily determine the deposition rate uh, evaporations uh, be remember is not widely used by the industry uh, that we can later on discuss in full detail that why not because normally in industry we need a very clean and neat material without any defects or the impurity so um, for that the film quality is not that good so uh, that's why we cannot use it in r d uh, so for that particular purpose uh, we normally utilize the sputter deposition technique that we will discuss in the next slide uh, but be remember for macro fabrication uh, fabrication that is R&D uh, evaporation is as important as sputter uh, depositions so what is sputtering uh, sputtering is also a technique that is being utilized for the deposition of nanomaterial in the form of thin film uh, be remember we are this technique we can deposit a uh, pure, uh, most pure uh, thin film as compared to evaporation. So the typical setup for uh, this kind of the uh, depositions uh, you can uh, visualize here in this figure. Uh, in this photograph here you can see that uh, what we have again just like the pre previous we have a vacuum source here we have a chamber a glow discharge and this chamber we normally create a vacuum so how much vacuum we have uh, normally we have a rough vacuum that is uh, tens of millitons uh, with a constant uh, with a constant stream of a uh, gaze uh, I mean which you can see it here uh, gaze normally uh, we have the argon gaze and the purpose by using the argon gaze is because uh, I mean we need to uh, generate a plasma so why we need to generate the plasma uh, because you know that uh, it's one of the main requirement plasma generation is one of the main requirement for the sputtering uh, technique so normally uh, for the generation of plasma uh, we need the argon gaze uh, that argon gaze we put it here uh, in the system so we applied uh, a high voltage uh, so the high voltage uh, that basically uh, generate the plasma a high voltage uh, that, that create a discharge so this discharge they generate the plasma for us so uh, then the high voltage basically accelerate uh, I mean once we generate the plasma due to glow discharge so the glow discharge once plasma has been generated so we apply high voltage that high voltage accelerated the positive ions uh, towards the target so once uh, these uh, plasma that is argon is accelerated toward the target so what actually they do uh, they hit the target I mean the target may be a particular material I mean for example the gore 
so once it hit the targets or the neutrals uh, target atoms that is goals they are being ejected I mean they ejected the uh, the target materials and these ejected atoms uh, they are being accelerated toward uh, the substrate where they are deposited in the form of uh, the thin film so these are uh, the short process I mean what actually happened in the spattering uh, technique so what we have we have uh, rough techniques uh, we have a rough vacuum that that is stands of many towers uh, with a constant steam gaze uh, and that is constant steam gaze is mostly argons so that's argons first we produce a plasma of that uh, argons so uh, after that we applying a high voltage and that high voltage I mean it's first been utilized for generating a plasma and then it's been utilized to accelerate the, the plasma towards the target where it had the target and eject the the target materials afterward uh, once it had the uh, I mean it ejected the target materials the target materials that are being accelerated towards the wafers uh, where it's been uh, deposited uh, on the vapor surface in the form of thin film so this is how we can deposit it uh, nanomaterial of our own choice uh, uh, and the uh, sputtering techniques the other techniques uh, we have the most popular technique for the deposition of nanomaterial in the form of thin film is called chemical vapor depositions that we can write and short as uh, CVD. So the typical uh, setup, I mean, it's, uh, normally uh, you people might have seen in your lab, uh, it consists of it, uh, uh, a horizontal tube furnace. I mean, you can call that uh, a simple CVD. Or you can have most complex setup. Uh, I mean, if you're working in a more developed lab, so you can also have a more advanced uh, CVD uh, system. So both of them you can see here. The basic concept uh, behind both the setup, I mean, is almost uh, the same. That is, uh, what you have, you have a substrate, and that substrate you put it inside uh, the system. Uh, uh, so normally you have the material, the material, I mean the, the, the precursor material, the precursor material can either be uh, the gases, I mean that they're called the source gases, or it can be the powder form which later on uh, can be converted into the gaseous form by applying the heat, uh, I mean you have a heat a heating source, so just like we mentioned previous, it can be an electric resistive heating or it can be some other form of sources. You providing the source and that sources that make the, the, the source gases uh, to react uh, with the surface and form deposit the material in the form of the thin film. Afterward, the, the thin film is being deposited, so the gases, the gaseous product, or we can say the waste product, a byproduct, they are being put away uh, from the chamber uh, through a pre-design uh, process. So this, these are the typical setup for uh, the CVD or chemical vapor uh, deposition technique. So the normal step uh, are the most common step that we have uh, in the CVD process consists of uh, at first we have uh, that is uh, we introduce reactive gases to the chamber I mean the reactive gases at first it can be an argon that is uh, an anode gas uh, to create a rough vacuum I mean we, we basically want to have a fewer uh, I mean reactions uh, among the reactive gases so for that, first of all, you want to generate an inner atmosphere. And then uh, uh, you, uh, what actually you do, uh, you flow the reactive gases. I mean, if you want to deposit uh, carbon nanotube or other form of nanotube, so if your precursors are the reactive gases, so here's, uh, I mean, after the argon flow, I mean, rough flow, or after creating a vacuum, a rough vacuum, uh, I mean, so if you're not using argon gas, you're, you're just creating a, so for that, uh, you, uh, you should just produce uh, a rough vacuum, and that you can do with the help of a rotary pump. Uh, but if you're not using a rotary pump, so you can do the alternative with the, uh, with the argon gas, you can uh, just uh, fluidation argon gas, so that can, uh, I mean, that can also do for the rough vacuum. Uh, I mean, it can fluish your system from the uh, impurity material, possible to impurity materials. So after that, you can easily introduce uh, your reactive uh, gases into the chamber to make uh, to synthesize your own materials. So after that, uh, the gases, I mean, uh, uh, activated gases, they are being heated uh, by 
a plasma or by the already arranged uh, system. I mean, whatever the, the heating system you have depend upon that particular uh, system. I mean, you're trying to heat up that reactive go, uh, react, uh, the, the activate gases. I mean, do you try to heat them? Uh, I mean, the heating purpose is normally you want those gases to be decomposed and form uh, the material, the desired material for you, uh, which you want later on to be deposited at the top of uh, the substrate. So uh, the gases, uh, I mean, after uh, once you apply the heat to the uh, activate gases, so they are being decomposed. Uh, and after that, they are being uh, adsorption process uh, at the substrate surface. So uh, reaction take place on the substrate uh, substrate surface, uh, uh, which as a result of which we have uh, thin film. I mean thin film on form. So uh, once thin film are formed, so after that we have transport of the volatile uh, byproduct, uh, and that normally take place away from the substrate. I mean here you can see in both the setup these are uh, the gaseous product I mean the, which normally we call the byproduct they are being taken away from uh, the system here you can see the gas outlet so here this gas outlet that's been designed uh, to take away the byproduct uh, from the substance once the desired material uh, they are being formed uh, and uh, these material which has been exhausted away they are normally called uh, the exhaust waste so this is a short definition, basically a short introduction of chemical vapor depositions uh, technique. So all these three techniques, they are being ut uh, utilized, uh, which are mostly called vapor deposition techniques. Uh, they are being utilized part of the synthesis of nanomaterial in the form of uh, thin film. So I hope you enjoy the lecture. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will have uh, further more discussions on the depositions uh, or the synthesis of nanomaterials. But in next lectures, we will have a discussion on other uh, deposition technique that is called solution deposition technique. That will be lecture number 17. So stay tuned with the next lecture. Uh, in next lectures, we will have discussions on solution depositions of the nanomaterials. So till then, bye-bye.